Hello and welcome to Property Mastermind Podcast with Hilary Saxon and Bob Anderson, episode 126. This week, the big question, could property development be your way out of a job? Oh my goodness, you're going to want to love to listen to this episode because it's something I talk about with people who are at least twice a day. So let's jump on in to episode 126. And welcome to episode 126. Like I said, could property development be your way out of a job? Bob and I are going to unpack this today and you'll find it very insightful. But before I do, I'm going to throw Bob under the bus because I haven't prepared him. You know how much I love being not prepared. What's happening? Well, first of all, yeah. But first of all, welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank Bob. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely to be here. And not just that. No. Uh, oh, I've actually just looked and we, I've got our names. It says Hilary Saxon and Bob Anderson. I missed the N. Oh, it's, that's such a me thing. <laughs> I miss that sort of thing, don't I? You do. You're, you're, you're going at like a thousand kilometres an hour. Yeah, I'm a high and achiever. You, and you read it. You, you read it a thousand kilometres an hour. Yeah. So to me, it was fine until I looked at it now. So, like, oh, yep. there should be an end. I'm going to get in trouble from. Yes, I know her. Yeah, never mind. She's probably listening as we record. Anyway, Bob, what I was going to say mm. was. And I haven't prepared you. No. What's your tip for the week? Oh, I know a good tip. Really? Usually something you get we stuck. discovered recently. Well, no. Well, we've done a bit of fishing lately mm-hmm. uh, for brim and chicken. Chicken's really good for brim. I mean, we've heard it on and off over the time, but we tried it. But not just normal chicken, flavoured chicken. We've been we made up some garlic chicken, which is pretty weird, and I, I mix some chicken with some tuna oil. Mm. They love it. They do. And you know what's crazy about using chicken is you don't get stinky, smelly, fishy fingers. It's yeah, kind of nice. Yeah. I've given them prawns and the yabbies a break for a minute. Yeah. And I'm on to chicken. And if you have some left over, you can cook it up if you really oh. want to and eat it. Yeah. Not that we have. But no. I, was, I say to Bob, we can, cook- we can make a stir fry <laughs> with this. <laughs> I'd, rather, I'd rather eat the fish that we catch with the chicken than eat the chicken that we didn't use to catch the fish. But we found out about it when we were down in the Great Ocean Road mm. and we were walking down a what was that? Was it Geelong on the pier? Oh, was it the Geelong pier? No, it no. wasn't. It was that town further down. Oh, Warnable. Warnable. Mm. And there were these two young go- uh, boys fishing and I said, oh, are you catching much? And they said, yeah. And I said, what are you catching? And they said, oh, well, they were catching were... snapper. No, they were catching salmon. Salmon, were they? Yeah. And I thought, oh, gosh, that's weird. What are you using? Just off the uh, yeah. wharf thing there, Jetty. Yeah. And they said, we're using chicken. And he pulls out a little Coles thing with chicken. Mm, and mm. it was, oh, it was bizarre. It was funny. Yeah. It was funny. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. oh, great tip, Bob. And it does oh, work. Go. Oh, my gosh. We we are, we got a few bites. So for the keen fisher people. Well, we caught people, quite a few fish. When we went out to the reef, we were catching fish there. One non-stop. Yeah. yeah. So. On, so On garlic-flavoured chicken. Yeah. Use the thighs. They don't fall apart oh, as easily as yeah. the chicken And breasts. that was reef fish. Yeah. So there Crazy. you go. Hey, Bob, we're going to give away the book. Yep. Well, first of all, Which one? We, well, mine doesn't get given away. Or maybe should no, I give one away? No, no you're way got to buy too valuable. Mine. Three wines in. No. Make a great Chrissy present if you've got people in your life who Certainly like to read. Would. Uh, a lot of people in our community have bought it. It's about setting goals and achieving them and feeling confident when you do it. But we're giving away Property Millionaires Exposed. And today, this goes to Marty Woodhart. Marty was actually the last mm, well person done, who Marty. downloaded the ebook. So, Marty, I just called out to the boss and said, Who wins this this week? And she said, Marty Woodhart. All right, there you go. Mm. So, well done. Marty Woodhart, you win. And that will be in the post. So, Georgia will reach out to you about that. Anyways, Bob. Yes. I briefly told you what we were talking about today, <laughs> as usual. Yeah, yeah, just a brief. <laughs> the brief this a brief, is, brief. And I, I've got some notes here. We can have a look. But mm, glad you have. Could property development be your way out of a job? And the reason I went with this is we so often work with people who mm. don't like their job. Yep. You know, job stands for J-O-B, just yeah. over broke. Yep. And there are a lot of reasons and we'll unpack those. But they, they decide they want to get into property development. Mm. And so I thought it's probably a great opportunity. Good escape route. Yeah, exactly. And I just thought we could just – unpack this so people can see what's possible Hmm. could property development be your way out of a job and the short answer so you don't have to listen to the whole thing is yes so if you're a busy person (laughs) you can go now surprise surprise yeah the answer is yes 
But you know what I, in my research, what I came mm. up with, because mm. often it's about people are in their job for many reasons, but yeah. a lot of the time it's about money. Yeah, money. Well, we forget that time and energy are currency as well. They run out. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. That's a good point. So you've got to um, be really careful how you do spend your time and your energy. So let's... let's yeah, it mightn't be there forever. No. Let's get cracking. Yeah, exactly. So what are the reasons people want to leave their job? What have we come up with in the past? Oh, I've seen lots of reasons. I, I'm, th- I'm thinking of a... Um, would you like a little story? I'd love a story. Yeah, okay. So uh, I had a lady join our mentoring program. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know. It could be seven or eight years ago now. The reason she joined is that her husband was a carpet layer. Yeah. And his knees were wrecked. Mm-hmm. And he used to virtually cry every day when he had to go to work. And she mm-hmm. used to cry every day because he had to go to work. And that was his job. And it's the only thing he ever knew. He'd been doing it since he was like 15. Mm-hmm. She wanted to get him out of that. Yeah. Out of that uh, situation with his knees and the carpet laying in the bad back uh, using property development as a, as a vehicle where they could get to a point fairly quickly of earning some income and get him out of that job. Mm. And I've heard plenty more. I mean, FIFO, fly in, fly out. How many people do we talk to? Uh, either them or their partner are off and away. They're separated, you know. Um, mm. Could be male or female. I mean, everybody. Do you uh, know another that I, FIFO, yeah. I hear, and this often can be attached to FIFO, is the old uh, golden handcuffs. Oh, People are earning yes. a lot of money and they don't want to give it up because they've got used to a specific lifestyle, mm. but they're often having to be working away or they're trading a lot of time to get that money but that's long, called the golden long, long, long handcuffs for a reason yeah. you've got them on and uh you don't really want to take them off do you well no nobody wants to go backwards too far so i mean if look some people are on a poor income mm. you know they don't feel like they're respected properly at work they could there could be issues with other other co-workers, you know, that they don't get on with. Mm. It could be the boss, not a lovely boss like our boss. Um, <laughs> yeah, we talk about our boss. She's not. We're really her boss, but she thinks she's our boss, so we just have to let her be I'm the not, boss. Oh, well, I'm not going to tell her otherwise. <laughs> okay, me either. And like all these reasons why people might want to get out of the day job, it could be money, it could be relationships at work. And just stress sometimes. Stress, sometimes some there's too job. much stress on somebody. Well, look, um, somebody we both know, who went through a terrible, stressful time during COVID, working mm. in the health industry. Oh, gosh. And working like just double shifts, mm. triple shifts virtually. Ended up even becoming sick from it. Sick from it. Yeah. Yeah, sick from stress and overwork. Yeah. So there are a lot of reasons that people want to get out. Mm. Have you ever yourself personally, before you got into property development, was there a time when you wished that, you oh, actually, I do know the answer that you wanted to get out of a job. Yeah, well, I not well, that's probably true of a couple of things. I've done a few weird jobs in my time, uh, but when I decided to go to university and become very clever, uh, but then realized I probably wasn't very clever and left after mm. six months, mm. I just needed to get away. I'd been studying for like 13 years, and I, I just didn't want to study anymore. I just wanted to earn a bit of money and you know, basically have a good time. So I went. I joined the public service because that was the easiest thing in the world to do, mm. and uh, and I was there for a while, vegetating away. Uh, it's probably different now, but back in those days, you know, it is what it is. And it didn't. It took me a little while to realise that a lot of the people I was looking at there, middle aged people, perhaps you know, even a bit older, a bit younger. And I thought, you know. I'm looking at me in 15 or 20 years' time. Mm. And they were a lot of them, well, not just because of that job necessarily, but 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 they weren't happy people. A lot of them probably drank too much and weren't all that happy. And I thought, well, I'm going to be like them. If nothing changes, I've got to change something. Mm. And, and the change is obviously leave there, mm. do something else. And, and I did. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I had to, I had to get out of there. It was doing... Doing my mind in. But but that wasn't when you left to do property development. I no. think your tipping point to leave, to, I mean, that was an example of a bad job, but your tipping point to leave um, 
a, a to decide to do property development was the whole lying on the couch, you know, needing to change your life and you were looking like at Like after my car accident. Yeah, uh, to find yeah. the way to make the, the most amount of money. And then having done that for over 40 years, obviously you like it. I haven't found anything better yet. <laughs> but I, and I've given up looking, by the way. And I'm a bit the same if, you know, when it comes to yeah. having worked and well, I've always been an entrepreneur, so pretty yep. much always worked for myself. A couple of times I've had J-O-Bs, but I'm not very good at jobs. Well, you got into property when you were 18. Yeah, so I was, yeah, but to be fair, that wasn't developing back then. That was just no. uh, buying and but, renovating but and selling. That, that's that's still ball, ballsy, if I can use the expression. Yeah. Um, an 18-year-old heading out there and buying a first property. Yeah. You know, with no help from anybody. Get out there and do it. And then did a big reno on that property, actually. Mm. Uh, not immediately, but did do before I sold it. <laughs> that was yeah. back in the day. Yeah. But finding out, for me, using property has always been alongside of, and mostly, you know, we all know it's been renovations mostly until the, the, the end you know, of the later years, but initially getting in and doing the renovations because it was something as a female I could do by myself. Mm. But now, would I leave property development? Never. I would <laughs> never leave property development as a thing that I do. Yeah. I mean, even the fact that I coach it all day, hmm. or not all day, but, you hmm. know, during the day I do, I work with people and coach them, but I, I don't think it's something I ever would not do. No, mm. no. It's exciting. Look, it's lots of things. It, you know, you do it well, you make really good money. Yeah. Case, you know, but, uh, do it badly. Uh, you won't make really good money, but do it well. Um, and and what does that mean? And and it doesn't ta- take a huge amount of time because, mm. as we know, as property developers, we have everybody running around doing things for us. We manage people and manage a process. So, so if you've got a situation where you can potentially earn quite good, you know, quite good money, mm. like hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars, shall we say, mm. uh, and not have to put in huge hours, then to me, what that means is a good lifestyle. Mm. Um, I've had times in my life where I've earned lots of money, but but, but I've been working huge hours to earn that money. Mm. Uh, you know, before my car accident, for instance, and but I never enjoyed my life. Mm. I had money everywhere, you know, uh, lots of, lots of money, lots of cash money. I had three businesses, you know, they're all pumping cash, uh, but but I was just like too exhausted and too tired to really enjoy myself. And then after I had the car accident, I had no income. Uh, other than a sickness benefit, living at home with mum and dad again. And, and so I had lots of time, mm. but I had no money. And that yeah. was pretty miserable too. So you, yeah, <laughs> you've got to find that balance. Balance. And I look at I remember. the balance is having lots of money and lots of spare time. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the go. And, and there's not many things that can deliver that, like like property development. I am I remember back to uh, a mentoring student, Dan, who wanted mm. to transition. I think his father had been a, a car painter, or was that him? He was in sell, He was selling cars it, by it, the it end. Was a, it was a spray painter by trade, yeah. which, which is why we got on, because my dad was a spray painter panel beater. Yeah. And I learnt the trade a bit um, when I was very young. But, but what I like to point out to people and everyone I speak mm. to, it's not it's not always easy. You know, we can't just think you no. jump in and this is the easiest thing yeah. in the world. It is not the easiest thing in the world. And ha- hands, you know, hats off to Dan, or hands up to Dan, whatever you want to say, high five to Dan. Hmm. He did the time and people, yep. it's often just at the beginning, there's a lot of time required finding your site and learning about what you need to do. And he did all that. And yep. then you know, he was able to transition to become a full-time property developer. Mm. So that was his. That was always his goal. Oh yeah, exactly. Transition out of the day job, yeah. but it's not something you can do. You can't go from zero to property developer. Yeah, you don't quit your job. Minutes. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, some people do, but we like. Oh, well, I mean, you could. Move. Yeah. I mean, if you won lotto on Saturday night, and you thought, well, what's a good thing to do with this money? Let's become a property developer. Mm. And you just got to learn what to do, or better still, um, come and talk to me, and I'll, I'll <laughs> yeah, you've sorted take out. Take you on them. as a joint venture partner <laughs> with your sixty million dollars you won at lotto. Yeah, there you go. So people get sick of their jobs, or they have all those other reasons, and then they decide they want to get into property development. Mm. So Bob's found it, I've found it, and sometimes it's because, and I've talked to a couple of people recently, Bob, yep. no superannuation. Oh yeah. So their superannuation yeah. package is, or the reason they're developing is because that is their superannuation. Mm-hmm. And I had a 
conversation with what do you a conspiracy a con, a, what do you a conspiracy, conspiracy theorist theory. the other day, yeah. and they were saying that they didn't even believe that superannuation would be around eventually, and people are going to get ripped off. But I don't know. I didn't not go down that road. I thought mm, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I, I'm not going down that path. You're not going down that path. Oh, not going I mean, to open that. Superannuation is compulsory for a start, but employers have to pay mm. it, and it goes into super funds. do not go to the government. So. Um, I think I think it will, but but look, there's a lot of people out there at the moment, like you said, have little super or no super. Me, well, because I'm change countries and get caught in the middle. I got change countries, caught in the middle, and work for myself, so I never really bothered it. But I'm lucky that I've actually got property development Mm. to fall back on. So Mm. you know that that is my superannuation. That can become your super. It is my super. And and the thing, the beautiful thing is, like superannuation is great. And particularly if, like, you start off paying super when you're young and, you mm. you know, you work, well, heaven forbid, you work for 40 years and you end up with, you know, a half-decent super. But because with property development, because you can create a lot of money quick quickly, yes, you can save a lot of money quickly and, you know, you can basically create your own super fund mm. uh, without having to spend 40 years working for somebody to build up your super, you know, that 10% or whatever it is, 10.5%, I don't even know what it is. We pay it, but I still don't know what it is. It comes out automatically uh, when we pay people, employees. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's but great for people, substitute for people. People like, for me, it's perfect. Mm. And it's uh, it, that's the sort of saving or it wasn't even I was I never actually considered myself to be us uh, having super in New Zealand they don't means test it anyway so everyone gets it yeah but over yeah. here I just assumed I would you know set myself up because by the time I moved to Australia I had properties in New Zealand anyway mm-hmm. so I yeah. always in my mind had that I would have pop- properties but now having just finished even my most recent project I mean that's just a great super superannuation that one that one property um some people could retire on. Yeah. So, you know, that's a, a great yeah. a great story. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Is. And but you you've made that story come true. Yeah, for sure. It didn't just land in your lap. No. But let's uh, you know, that's the NDIS project I have mm. just finally finished in WA mm. and it's great. It has a great return and I can finance out of it and do all the you know, move on and do all the bits and pieces. But the good thing or the interesting thing, or the thing we should say out loud is it came with so many hurdles like that project had mm. hurdles like many people do and when we talked to the builder the other day we, we spoke on the phone for an hour and it was great for him to you know unpack what he'd gone through mm. but like you said you you it was it's turned out to be the best thing ever but mm. you've got to jump hurdles sometimes so it's not oh, for the yeah. faint-hearted no there's there's a lot of angst along the way yeah you know, rapid construction prices um you know, having having to like even even stop works for, for seven a while. months. Yeah, that stopped for seven months. So mm. yeah, so uh, so that, there are those reasons. Yeah, uh, yeah. So so the old day job, it, it's um not all what it's cut out to be. No, it's a good thing to get rid of in a lot of cases. I mean, it does depend. I mean, we have we have people in our program, for instance, who have uh, like a life calling. Like we've had a number of doctors, for instance, through our mm. through our mentoring program over a period of time, and and some of them have actually wanted to finish being doctors, yeah, and a couple of them really enjoy it, but but property development for them is something that they do on the side as well mm-hmm. because they love property and they want to do it. Don't necessarily want to quit the day job, but I, I, as you'll often hear me say, once you get into property development, you start to realise the amount of money that you can make. Mm. And the amount of hours that you necessarily don't have to work in making that money, we have other people doing the work for you, that the day job quickly loses its flavour. So, Bob, we've, we talked last week about getting started and we talked about mindset. Mm. So why do people stay in a job that they don't like yeah. and when they know that there are other options available to them and let's just go with, say, it is property development, yeah. Why do people not do something about it earlier? Because most people, by the time they get to us, they've thought about it for a while, yep. number one. Number two, they've done investing, property investing, and they wished they'd stopped and actually started developing mm. because it's tied their money out for too long and it's been yeah. too slow. Yep. And I don't, that's the only one and two. I haven't got a number three unless you've got one. Oh, no. But look, the thing about um, – it, it, it's about time. It's about making – 
making money faster. Mm. And what does that mean? Well, we talk about lifestyle, which is important, but it could be an early retirement. Mm. It could be bringing your retirement earlier. Like yeah, property development. But why do people not do it? Is oh, they the don't question. do it. Security is one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some it, fear, as you know, fear, fear is a big thing. Mm. Thank goodness we do have fear. Otherwise, we just nonchalantly walk out in front of the traffic or something, you know. But but the fear of the unknown, some people, mm. uh, the, the security, some people really need that security of a job. Some people stay in jobs they don't like, that are underpaid and they don't like them, but they'll do it because it's a job that's there every day and they, you know, they're in the habit of doing it. And, and do you know what? For them to change. The people don't like change and they'll resist change, change. even though they don't like what they're doing. And mm. until, I don't know, the straw that breaks the camel's yeah. back. So they'll stay there for, I like, they'll stay there for too long. They're and I admire. Happy but comfortable then. Like, but they prefer to stay unhappy than, than tempt change because mm. they, they're worried that, well, it's change and people just don't like doing a bit of change, do they? It's change and it's, mm. it's a little bit of fear of the unknown and, and, and confidence. Yeah, they're lacking self belief. Yeah. And so self, are and we talking about you right now? Are you feeling like this is you? And it could, could be, be that you need property development, but maybe it's you just need a change of job. In fact, that was my <laughs> I did two podcasts. I did one this afternoon, mm-hmm. the Bounce Back Better podcast, if you're into that, that's a bit more on a motivational theme. Yeah. Um, and I did talk about are you happy in your job? Because so many people aren't, yeah. but they get stuck there. And I think when it's we a rut. Oh, yes. And you know what a rut is? Oh my goodness. A, a rut is just a, a grave with the ends kicked out. Oh, isn't that terrible? I heard that years ago and it stuck mm, in my mm, mind. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so lots of reasons. But the, the thing is you don't have to give up your, J, your day job Your, your J job. Your J job. Your job doll. <laughs> you don't have to give up your day job to start property development. No. It's not like like if you had to give up your day job before you could do anything, that, that, that would be a big leap, mm. a leap of faith and you'd need some money behind you. But most people, just about all people really, start while they've got a day job. Mm. They start, and, and you can easily start a property development, get a, you know, do a project while you're working full time. There's very few jobs that you couldn't, and we've seen that. Mm. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking of Ross mm. when he developed a seven townhouse project in uh, Coffs Harbour while he was working up in Newman or somewhere like that in the Northern Territory uh, with, you know, almost no internet. And remember he used to bring people in his smoko break and because Western Australia was two hours behind or even sometimes three hours behind the East Coast, he was able to talk to a few people after work. He, he ran that very successful project from from Mars almost. Mm. You know, it was from where he worked. It was but like so Mars. did uh, the other mentoring student, what's her name, um, Sonia. Oh, yeah. She did hers FIFO as well. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much the same. Yeah. But I think people... You can do what, what I'm saying is you can do a project while you've got a day job. Yeah, for sure. And or you can get educated. And if you if money's the barrier there, we do have the membership, which is really very economical. Mm. So that's our oh, property soft, accelerator. Soft entry into property it development, I'd call it. it. Yeah, exactly. So that's not not too costly, and you can find out if you like it. And if you do, well, then you'll you'll like you'll Take you'll want to speed it. You'll want to speed, speed up. up. But I think Bob, we forget, and we all think that we're going to be here forever. And, you know, too many people aren't here forever. Know. You know, where we all know somebody was gone way too early, your parents to start with. I was in my 30s when, when, when they left. Yeah, that's just ridiculous. Yeah. You know, and, and everybody listening now knows somebody. Like one of my best girlfriends isn't here anymore and it's just mm. – it, but we've all got to know somebody or – so we think that we're here forever and we aren't. So we have to do yeah. – you get one life and you have to do what you want. You have to be happy. Yeah. It's something we forget, and we go through the motions. I'm here. I'm getting on. A, I'm getting on a wee pedestal, that a soapbox. We go through the motions of life and just get into habits that aren't great. And remember, our bodies and brains love habits, and they mm. don't care whether they're good or bad. No. So they'll just roll with any habit that you give yep. it because it stops. Any habit's a good habit, as yeah, far as that's concerned. Because it just wants to stop thinking. Yeah. So. Seriously, if you are not happy doing what you're doing, or you don't like the picture. And the long-term picture. Then, yeah, you have to do something about it. And I believe, and this is a perfect time of year to do it, just Mm. like I said in the other podcast, which I know some of you listen to both, so sorry, a bit repetitive. But I do believe that this time of year is perfect for assessing your life. 
And if you've got three ones in, it's in about chapter eight, jump there and go through that, the life assessment process. But if you haven't, just go through all of the areas in your life and rate them out of 10. Mm, Because when we rate something out of 10, and your jaw will be included in that, when we rate something out of 10, our brain goes, because you might, I might say to you, do you like what you do? And you go, yeah, it's pretty cool. But then is that pretty cool a six or pretty cool a nine? And what yeah. we forget to do is look and find out whether whether that's a seven or a four. Because if it's pretty cool and it's a five, well, that's pretty shit really, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. It's good to grade it, I guess. Yeah. And it's good for your mind to, to see that grading. Otherwise, it's, it's all just floating around up there. Yeah. You can be unhappy. There's no measure. And... We need to measure because then we mm. can actually ascertain mm. where we are. So it's important to ask yourself, how do I feel about what I'm doing and do mm. I see myself doing this forever? Yeah. And if not, what what steps can I start to take? Yeah, and it could be that you do property development on the side and just do a soft start or get yeah. in and do a, do a hard start. You could still do it fully on the side or you could start learning on the side. But if property development's where you want to go, well then, you know, we don't we can't guarantee we're here for either, ever. And both you and I do it and love it. Mm. Yeah. Like you said before, there's plenty of people these days are getting to, you know, a certain age, could be 50, 55, could be anything, and, and it only dawns on them at that age, and I've seen this happen. Mm-hmm. It dawns on them at that age. I haven't got the nest egg I thought I was going to have. Mm. You know, I, when they look at their super and when they want to give up work and they think, how long is that going to last? And, and some people are thinking, I'm going to have to work till the day I die. I'm going to have to work till I'm 80. Um, well, no. Uh, you're, you're thinking of doing a normal job to make a normal, you know, 30 or $40 an hour. I talked to somebody this morning, I kid you not, they said to me their retirement plan is to work to the day they die and hopefully they make it to their grave. That's what she said to me. We were talking about something <laughs> and she goes, oh, I just have to work to the day I die. And I was like, oh, gosh. And she goes, yeah. And I said, hope you love your job. Well, it was, it was just a funny conversation and I said she goes I probably won't even make it to my grave and I said well if you like I'll pick you up and take you there so <laughs> she was all concerned about that yeah mm. so do you know why though we, well, we underestimate ourselves as well we don't think we don't realize that we are capable of mm. of doing what we're doing we've got an amazing interview next week with somebody a female on the other side of 58 I'd say mm. and Doing her first property development. And, what's that? Youngster. Youngster. Doing her first property development while she's working. Yep. Has a joint venture partner. Like there is just, that's just the coolest story in mm. the world. Mm. So, and when I speak to her now, she, she, say, she said to me the other day, she, she said, so do you think you could find me an investor? That's what she said to me. Mm. I was like, oh my goodness. That, you know, so cheeky. But the cool thing is, is that she doesn't underestimate herself anymore and now she's mm. looking for another. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. what does that project make, Bob, that she's doing? Oh, pretty, pretty pretty healthy, like probably seven years full-time wage for a normal full-time wage earner. Yeah, there you go. So she makes within 18 months, 18 months, it'll be finished? Yeah, it's about a 20, 22 month project, yeah. 22 month project makes all of that. Like that's that is just a great example of someone who doesn't underestimate themselves. Mm. And the other thing we have to stop doing is accommodating others. We stay in a job oh, because yeah. we we are we've got a huge mortgage and we have to be there. Sometimes you just have to look at ways. And the, the best question you can ask yourself is how how can I change my situation? Mm. Not why am I in it? Yeah. How can I change it? Mm. Yeah, yeah, and and change. Yeah, you just, sometimes you just have to embrace it. Oh yes. Change is good. Change can be really good. By nature, I'm not someone that embraces change, but mm. like, but I'm also analytical. And if I can see that something has to be changed and it needs to be changed, and it, then I'll I'll embrace it. Mm. But um, that's an interesting way of looking at it. Understanding that because of you, that your because of your analyticalness, if that's mm. a word, that will be the reason that you will make a change. So for people of Bob's personality type, so if you've read my book, it's in there, but if, even if you've heard me talk about it long enough, the counsellor style, the high mm. S and the disc profile, they are more resistant to change the most. But Bob understands that because he has an analytical brain, he'll weigh it up and so he'll be more likely to change. And even if that isn't true, the fact that you said that out loud and you believe it makes it true. So mm. that's perfect. Mm. How good's that? But there's some, but I'm also stubborn. Oh, God, you're so stubborn. Just, no, yeah. Don't intend changing. No, <laughs> so stubborn. 
Oh my goodness. Yeah. Way more stubborn than me. Uh, well, uh, yeah. Oh well. Ying yang. Yeah, yeah, yin yang. So in summary, Bob, if you want a career change that gives you flexibility, lifestyle, mm. time, it will time back yep. and a wee bit of adrenaline on the side occasionally, a little it's bit exciting. of stress. It's, yeah. it's fluid, it's changing all the time. It's great. And you meet some great people as oh, well. Yeah. Look at us. How many wonderful people have we met? Oh, amazing. I get so many texts a, like, a day. I mm. get so many texts yeah. from people. I mean, obviously a lot of them are clients, but clients become friends. Mm. I just have so many messages from people. Even somebody today wanted to talk to you and they're, hello, my friend Hillary. I was like, no. <laughs> so I know you're listening. Hey, how yeah. you going? You'll be moving bricks, I say. Yeah. Yeah. But it certainly it, it has been the catalyst for a lot of really good positive changes in people's lives. Yes. As well. And uh, done properly. Always done properly. And we know we've talked enough about how to do it properly. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, Bob, I think that my one liner of energy and time are currency as well. Yeah. And put yourself, uh, don't put put everyone else ahead of you. Uh, don't underestimate yourself. Yep. I think sure. all of those things are just a reminder to people that if you are wanting to get into property development, well, then why not you? Why not you? All right, everybody, we will catch you next week. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Bye for now. Bye now.